Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to us! Valve just gave us an early Christmas present and launched an official application on the Quest Store. Yes, you heard me right, Steam Link is now officially on the Quest Store. That means a direct connection to play PC VR in Steam VR from your Quest 2, Quest 3, and Quest Pro. It's got some massive benefits, including it's free, it's fast, and it's super easy to set up. But how does it compare to something like Virtual Desktop or even Air Link from Oculus? Before we jump in together, to see just how smooth the gameplay is, let's break apart the differences between the three different ways to play PC VR on your Quest. First up, let's talk AirLink. AirLink is Meta's official way to play PC VR games on your Quest. It does use the antiquated Rift platform that is quickly seemingly losing support, but it's how I personally play all of the games in my Oculus library from PC VR to Quest. It's very easy to set up and seamless to play Oculus games, but what about Steam VR? Steam is the platform known for having the most sales, the best deals, and a lot of people build their libraries in Steam because it's multi-platform and usually costs less. Well, you can definitely play games through AirLink on Steam, but you have to keep a few things in mind. It's not officially supported in the sense that your games are not gonna auto-populate from Steam to your Oculus library list. You'll either have to run Steam VR separate once you're inside of the Oculus AirLink platform or manually go on your PC and add those games into your library on the Rift software. Neither of which are really that hard, but you have to keep in mind that your PC overhead is gonna be higher because you're gonna be running both the Oculus AirLink software for the Rift software and Steam and SteamVR at the same time. Now, if you have a high-end PC, you might not necessarily notice the difference, although there can be more latency even if you've got a good PC when you're running both and Steam is trying to get the tracking data from Oculus, which is getting it from the Quest and streaming through AirLink. There's a whole system going there and it just makes for additional friction points. So it works, but it's not necessarily the best way to do it. AirLink is free, so that is a big benefit to that. Now, on top of that, you've got Virtual Desktop. That is not free. I believe it's $15 now for virtual desktop and that has been the go-to for Steam VR players for a long time because of the customization, because of how well it's worked and it just has functioned way better to play Steam VR games than AirLink for a long time. In fact, pre-AirLink release. And Virtual Desktop is still a great way to play Steam VR games, especially if you've already purchased it. Gives you home environments to jump into and launch from. It's got a lot of customization, a lot higher bit rate. It just has a lot more options, sharpening in comparison to what Steam offers currently, but we'll get into that in just a minute. Overall, it's, it's a great software, but it does take some additional steps. They're not a lot, but you do have to download on your PC a launcher, make sure that the username is put in. You have to log in using the application in your Oculus library, choose your PC to connect to, then it puts you into a room separate from SteamVR where you can launch your SteamVR games, but that'll then launch SteamVR from there instead of launching you directly into SteamVR. It's a few steps in between getting to your game. As I already mentioned, the biggest three benefits I've seen from Steam that set it apart from both of the other platforms in different ways is number one, it's free. Virtual Desktop does cost money, so Steam's new software is 100% free and it just works out of the box. That's the second big thing. It's easy, it's simple. The way you set it up is actually so easy, it takes literally 10 seconds to get it set up. As long as you have Steam and SteamVR installed on your gaming PC, go to the Oculus Store, search for Steam Link, and then hit Get when you get to the page to add it to your Quest library. Once you've done that, all you have to do is go into your Quest headset, install the new application, click the button, and it actually doesn't launch into a VR application, which I really like. It just launches a flat Android application where it'll ask you to set up. You just hit get started. It'll search your network for a PC, give you a four digit number to enter onto your computer, and then you click confirm and you're done. It literally is ready to connect. And when you wanna play PC VR on your Quest, you just open up the app, click the button to connect to your PC, and within five to 10 seconds, you're in your Steam home. Yes, five to 10 seconds. That's the third point, it's fast. You can go from putting your headset on to getting into a Steam game in 10 seconds, which is a massive difference from any of the other ways to do it. Going into AirLink, sometimes take a minute to connect, then you have to launch Steam VR, then you get to launch your game, takes time. Same thing with virtual desktop, you get to launch virtual desktop, connect to the PC, either look for the game in your library, wait for Steam to launch, or launch Steam VR separately. So on top of the overhead, the time difference is massive too, it's fast. 
you could go from standing in your gaming space to being in Half-Life Alex in mere seconds and it's free, which is mind blowing. It's a crazy time and it's a huge gift to all of us VR gamers. All right, I'm all done talking. Now I wanna take you through how it works and I'm gonna do it really quickly. I'm gonna put a timer on the screen once we get into the quest, just to show you how long it takes to get into the Steam home or, or game or whatever you wanna do. So let's go ahead and check it out right now. Okay, so here we are on the quest three. I wanted to show native recording on the quest because then you can see how long it takes to get into the actual software and what the image looks like coming to the actual quest. Not on the PC, what it's rendering, but what the image looks like broadcasting through Steam Link. So I'm going to start a timer as soon as I click on this Steam Link button and we're going to see just how long it takes to get in there. All right, ready and go. You click on Steam Link. It's going to open up the software, show the Valve logo, initializing. You're going to have your PC pop, pop up. See, it's communicating. I just heard a beep over there on the computer. Connect. There it is and it's connected through Steam VR. It'll pop up, there it is right there. Now we're already connected to the PC in Steam VR. No latency noticeable, it's really, really good. And you'll get a little bit of hitching when it first loads up into your home environment sometimes. Um, but there we are, that was it. We're in Steam VR now and it feels good and the latency is fantastic. Now let's jump into a game just so I can show you some gameplay. I'm gonna do Alex just because I love I love playing Gunman Contracts in Half-Life Alex, so we're just gonna load that up. I'm just gonna hit load or start game or whatever I just clicked, I can't remember, and it loads right into Half-Life Alex. There we go, now we're loaded in. This feels like an extension now of the quest. It's actually faster, in my opinion, to get into a game on Steam now than it is on Airlink. It feels faster. Anyways, I don't know if it's the menu system or the familiarity with Steam or what it is, but you can go from being on your quest to being in a game in a very, very short period of time. Let's just load into this. I, I, I love playing this. Half-Life Alex is fantastic, don't get me wrong. But whenever I want to test something, I go into Gunman Contracts just because I love this mod for Alex. All right, All right. well, we're starting off here. I, I would have started off at the beginning, but let's grab this, put that in there. I'm going to grab the key card, and it feels really good. Oh, I've got click turning on. Yuck. That's okay. We'll, we'll just turn. Look at, look at what it looks like, though. Okay, so this is what it's rendering to on the Quest. It looks fantastic. I love the way this is looking. Uh, now, there obviously is more latitude or more adjustments and sharpening on virtual desktop. It does look a little soft, especially around the edges. It's actually got, like, a rendering thing going on. I think it's, like, a foveated rendering thing. I don't know if you can see it in the footage, but... The edges around are soft, and it's a little bit softer in the middle than Virtual Desktop currently because Virtual Desktop has that magic sharpening going on. So hopefully that gets changed eventually, but it's fantastic. Haha, <laughs> I, just, I just realized something. Hold on, let's pause this for a second. <laughs> my audio is coming through my PC, and that is an issue that has happened with a lot of people I've seen in the comments in the reviews. There is a fix to this, okay? So right now my audio is coming through my speakers on my PC. To fix that, you actually have to go to your desktop. Pull up the desktop here, and you're gonna actually go down to your sound bar here, and you're gonna to go to your sound options, and you have to set it to speakers, Steam streaming speakers. Now, when we go back into the game. Now I'm gonna get shot at here. The audio should be, there we go. Oops, crap. Rod. Shoot, I just messed that up really bad. <laughs> Alright, I died. But you can hear the audio coming into the speakers. Ah, uh, that was terrible. Let's do that. Let's just do that again really quickly. I, I gotta make myself look better than that. I, I know that I can do this. I, I've beat this before. It is challenging. But now the audio is coming in. I, I actually wanted to mention that because I had the same issue when I tested it earlier. And I was gonna change it and show it to you. But yeah, that is that's what's happening is you need to switch your audio output. You have to do the same thing on Oculus a lot of the time. Sometimes it works for some reason on the Oculus platform and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but every, so far, all the times I've tested this, you actually have to manually switch your microphone over and you'll have to switch it back once you get to your PC uh, if you wanna hear things on your actual PC. So that's what you have to do. You actually have to switch over. Let's take our gun out. You actually have to manually switch over your microphones or your speakers and actually your microphone when you set it up. Come on out. There we go. I just love 
the speed of this game. You feel like John Wick in this game. You have to be very fast, though, and think on your feet very quickly because you can end up dying very, very fast. I've died more times than I care to admit. Oh, crud! I forgot about that guy. Oh, crap. I'm about to die. There we go. Eject myself. There we go. Forgot how to use the health ejector. It's been a little while since I've done this. <laughs> Alright. Let's keep moving. But this feels really good. Now I've got my nerves around edge. I'm trying to talk at the same time. Ready? And... All right. Ready? Once you get past this part... It gets a little bit easier. Well, I don't know about easier. Oh, crud. Oh, he was behind me. I forgot about that guy. <laughs> but there you go. That's Gunman Contracts running on Steam Link seamlessly. Feels fantastic. And then, just like if you were on Steam, you're going to hit your start button, and it's going to go right to your, well, it's, it's this right now, but we can hit Steam. It's just going to go to your Steam menu. You don't hit the Oculus button. You just hit start, and it goes to that. You can hit home. You actually play flat games, too, if you want to. Uh, on a giant screen and one of your Steam home environments if you want. This literally feels like a native Steam platform running on the Quest. And as soon as you want to exit out the Quest, instead of having to try to find the button on the bar to disable Air Link, just hit your Oculus button and hit quit. And it actually kicks you out of that, but it closes Steam on your computer too. My computer's behind that wall. That's why I'm looking that way. It actually closes Steam. So it'll, it'll exit out of Steam VR, close it down to the main Steam menu. Unlike in uh, some other games, when I'm playing on, you know, like Air Link especially, um, if I don't exit out of it properly, if I just close out Air Link, it'll leave the game open, but it actually exits out of it. So personally, I'm a huge fan of Steam Link so far. There you go. That is Valve's present to us this year for Christmas, apparently, unless they launch something else or announce something else in the next couple of weeks. I think Steam Next Fest is next week. So who knows? But... Thank you to Valve for making this a reality. It is so, so easy and free and simple. Let me know in the comments if you've tried it. If you haven't tried it, check the link in the description to go get it for free on the Quest Store. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more VR content, and as always, happy questing.